Okay, so thank you for introduction. So I'm Mitsuna, and I'm going to talk about the uh, exact random diversity of composable two-party computation. So this is a joint work with Sandeep Garg and Om Kans Pandey. Okay, so let me start from the introduction. And uh, since this work is about uh, two-party computation, let me first introduce what it is. So in secure two-party computation, we consider two parties who has a secret input. And our goal is to, de to design a protocol that enables them to compute a function of the secret input. And of course, our requir the requirement is that uh, they can compute function securely. So for example, we require that uh, they, compute, they can compute the function correctly, their, func their input remain hidden, or they, they choose the input independently of the input of the other person. Okay? And formally, uh, we define the security of uh, two-party computation by using a simulation paradigm. So we consider real world in which the function is computed uh, by a protocol, and we also consider real ideal world in which the function is computed by a trusted third party. And uh, we define security by requiring, requiring that uh, for any adversary in the ideal world, there exists a simulator in the ideal world, such that the ideal world simulator can simulate the view of the real world adversary. So this means that uh, we require that uh, any attacks in real world can be simulated in the ideal world. So this, uh, this guarantees that the real world has the uh, same level of security as the ideal world. Okay. And uh, in this talk, uh, we consider a two-party computation protocol that satisfies a stronger notion of security called uh, concurrent security. So in concurrent security, we consider two parties who execute many sessions of the protocol at, uh, concurrently. And uh, actually, we also allow them to execute a session with another party, okay? So here, two parties, P1 and P2, execute uh, three sessions concurrently, and P2 also execute a session with another party, P3, okay? And the concurrent security requires that the uh, security hold even in this setting. So in particular, we, we require that the simulator exists in, even in this setting, okay? So clearly, uh, concurrent security is more general than the standard uh, standalone security. And actually, it is also more realistic because uh, on the real network, like the internet, protocol indeed executed in, the, in a concurrent in, in, in concurrent session. Okay. However, uh, a drawback of a concurrent security is that uh, is that uh, it is hard to obtain. And in fact, in the case of uh, secure two-party computation, it is known that uh, achieving a concurrent security in the prime model is impossible. So this means that uh, if we don't have any trusted setup, such as a uh, common reference string, then we cannot construct uh, concurrently secure two-party computation. Okay. Then uh, because of this uh, impossibility, many researchers have tried to find a way to bypass this uh, impossibility. And in particular, several researchers have uh, proposed an alternative uh, relaxed security definition on which this impossibility doesn't hold. Okay. And in this work, we focus on one of these definitions. So namely, we focus on super polynomial time simulation security or SPS security, okay? So now what is SPS security? So in SPS security, uh, SPS security is uh, actually almost identical with uh, standard uh, simulation-based security. But here, we allow the simulator to learn in super polynomial time, okay? So here, uh, the ideal world simulator is uh, much, much stronger than the real world adversary. So clearly, uh, SPS security is weaker than the standard uh, polynomial time simulation security, but uh, it is still guaranteed meaningful security in many cases. And this is because uh, SPS security guarantees that uh, uh, any attacks in the real world can be simulated in the ideal world in super polynomial time. So if uh, ideal world is secure against the super polynomial time adversary, then SPS security guarantees meaningful security. And indeed, uh, ideal, world ideal world is secure against, uh, against super polynomial time adversary uh, such in many cases, such as uh, when computing uh, complement functionality or OT functionality. And in such a cases, we can use uh, uh, SPS security with no problem. Okay. Then uh, let me explain what is known about uh, concurrent, uh, concurrent SPS secure to party computation. And actually, we also we already have a lot of positive results about the concurrent SPS two PC, and in particular, uh, its asymptotic random complexity has been extens extensively studied. 
So in fact, for now, we know that the, we can construct the constant concurrent SSP SPPC under the standard assumption, such as the trap the permutation and the collision resist hash function, okay? So regarding uh, asymptotic current capacity, we know how to achieve the as optimal random capacity under the standard assumption. So however, even though asymptotic round complexity has been expensively studied, its exact round complexity is not well studied. So in fact, uh, previous work focus on, focuses only on uh, um, if asymptotic round complexity and the, the exact round complexity of the protocol has a large constant, uh, such as the 20, okay? And this is uh, very in contrast to the standard setting because uh, in standard on setting, uh, exact round complexity is also very studied, and we already know that the only five round is optim optimal for, for security part computation. So this means that uh, regarding uh, exact round complexity, there is, a, there is a gap between the standard on security PC and the concurrent security PC. Okay. So motivated this, uh, this gap, uh, in this work, uh, we studied the problem of constructing a concurrently secured SPS to PC that has a good random complexity. So in particular, our goal is to close the gap between the exact random complexity of the standard on uh, to PC and the concurrent secured SPS to PC. Okay. So now I'm, uh, I'm ready to explain our result. So what is our result? So in this work, uh, we show that uh, we construct a five-round uh, two-party computation protocol that is secure in the, that, is, that set of concurrent security in the SPS setting, okay? So this means that uh, we show that even in the concurrent setting, the same random capacity as the standard one is uh, sufficient for obtaining two-party computation, okay? And uh, this, the assumption we use in this work is a standard uh, cryptographic primitive such as trap the permutation and the loss interruption and additionally, we use a uh, three-round uh, non-marivo commitment that, that satisfies some uh, extractability properties, okay? And we know that uh, from previous work that uh, such a non-marivo commitment can be constructed from uh, one-way permutation that is secure against the quasi-polynomial time adversary. So our results can be based on such a quasi-polyhard one-way permutation. Okay? And uh, there are some remarks about our result. So first, uh, our, our, our protocol has the five round in the setting that uh, both parties get out of it. And if we consider a setting where only one party get out of it, then we can reduce the round complexity further. And uh, in particular, our protocol has only four rounds in such a setting. Okay. And next, uh, currently our main result require quash polynomial is harder one-way permutation because we need the uh, three round com normal commitment. But if we increase the round complexity to seven, then we can remove such a quash polynomial hard assumption and the protocol can be based on polynomial hard assumption, okay? But uh, currently it is open whether we can obtain five rounds under the polynomial time assumption, okay? And finally, I know that uh, unlike in standard setting, currently we don't know whether five round is optimal for two-party computation in the concurrent SPS setting. So in particular, if we use a strong assumption, such as a sub-exponential hard assumption, then uh, less than five rounds might be, might, can, might be possible. So this is also another open question. Okay. So in the reminder of this talk, I'll explain our, our technique, okay? So first of all, uh, I have to say that uh, unfortunately, our 2PC protocol is uh, quite complex, and in particular, I, uh, our protocol is based on a lot of primitives, such as uh, garbage circuit, trap the permutation, for round the Zeronach argument, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, needing uh, all of these primitives is already hard, so of course we cannot explain, I cannot explain all the detail here. So in this talk, I only explain uh, our technique informally, okay? And uh, also, uh, in this work, uh, to make our protocol as simple as possible, uh, in this work, we we only consider a simplified setting in which uh, only one party get output and uh, each party get, uh, each party's role has, uh, is fixed in all, the in all the sessions, okay? So in particular, in this talk, we consider the setting that the P party P1, oh, okay. 
Uh, so in particular, because the setting that uh, P1 get the output in all the session, okay? So, so and in this setting, our protocol has only four rounds, and uh, actually we don't need to use no Mario commitment in our protocol. So if we, if we consider setting in which both party get output, we need to get one round, we need to, uh, we need to add one round by using a standard technique. And uh, if, we, if the load of each party is uh, interchangeable, then we need to add no Mario commitment to our protocol. But uh, in this talk, we ignore this issue. Okay. So now let me explain our result, our, our, our overall approach. So from previous work, we know that uh, we already have a four round two party protocol in the standard on single, out set, single output setting. Okay. And we also know that uh, there exists a compiler from a standard on two party computation to the concurrent SPS secure two party computation. So uh, our overall approach is uh, quite straightforward. So we combine these two results, and uh, we, in particular, we try to apply the compiler start of the concurrent SP to party, uh, concurrent SPS to PC to the four round two PC standard protocol. Okay. And uh, however, of course, uh, we, we, we encounter a lot of problem when doing this, and uh, I will explain the main difficulty from the next slide. Okay. So let me first uh, recall the concurrent SPS compiler of GGJS, or GAG, Goyao, Jane, and Sahai, okay? So the compiler of GGJS takes a, takes a standard on two, semi on two-part computation, uh, tied to PC, and compile it by adding a trap to set that phase and uh, witness indistinguishable proof of knowledge in which each party proves that uh, they behave honestly in the two-party computation part or they know the trap door that is set up in the trap to set up phase. Okay. And then uh, the simulator of uh, GGJS uh, works by extracting a trap door by brute force from a trap to set up phase and uh, give a uh, double proof by using trapdoor so that it can, it can simulate uh, the two PC part, okay? So actually, so the compiler, of simula uh, compiler and the simulator of GGS are relatively standard, and so they are not so difficult. However, what is difficult in GGS is, uh, showing is uh, indistinguishable proof between the real world and the ideal world. So in particular, since now we consider uh, super polynomial time simulation, the simulator line is super polynomial time. So if we con consider a naive reduction that internally emulates simulator, such a simulator would run in super polynomial time. So we cannot use such a reduction to show the indistinguishability between the real world and ideal world. Okay. Then uh, the key idea by GGJS is to overcome this problem by considering a polynomial time hybrid between the real world and the hydra. So in particular, uh, they consider a hybrid experiment in which the simulator obtained trapdoor in polynomial time by using a rewinding extraction rather than the brute force extraction. Okay. Then uh, by considering such hybrid, we can first show that the ideal world is indistinguishable from hybrid and because uh, they, the only difference between them is, uh, ha is the way to extract trapdoor. And anyway, we can show that uh, the same trapdoor is extracted in the hybrid and the inside world. Okay. And we can also show that the real world is indistinguishable from hybrid. And a key point here is that the both real world and the hybrid run in, in polynomial time. So we can design reduction in a standard way. So of course, there, is, uh, there are much more technicality in the, in the actual proof, but uh, the most important idea by GGJS is, uh, is uh, to consider polynomial time hybrid between the real world and the ideal world. Okay. Then uh, let's consider what will happen if we apply the compiler of GGJS to the standard four round two party protocol of Katz and Ostrowski or KO. Okay. So first, I note that uh, actually designing a super polynomial simulator for the KO protocol is not so difficult. So the KO protocol uh, consists of a semi omnest standard two-party protocol and coin tossing and the witness indistinct proof and the zero-knock argument. 
And the simulator work by extracting a trap, which extracts bitterness from the WI pool for zero knowledge using its uh, argument of knowledge property. Okay? So we can design super polynomial simulator by changing, by modifying the original simulator to extract the uh, bitterness from WI pool or the argument by pool exposed. Okay? So we can easily obtain the super polynomial term simulator for that. Okay? So, however, even though we can easily obtain super polynomial simulator, we cannot show the indistinguibility in a, in a, in a straightforward way, in a straightforward way, okay? So, in particular, we encounter a problem when showing the indistinguibility between the real world and the hybrid. So, let me explain what is the difficulty. Okay. So, to see the difficulty, uh, let's consider what will happen if we change the real world into a hybrid in a session by session order. And uh, in particular, we consider setting that uh, the adversary is a, or, 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 or. the adversary is a 32, and the two sessions are executed in this specific order. Okay? And uh, what is important is this red part, and the other part is uh, illustrated, illustrated in a sim simplified way. Okay? So then, since we change the, when we go into hybrid in a session by session order, we first simulate the session one. And in particular, we change the witness in the WI proof, uh, simulate the two party computation part while extracting uh, witness from the wrong argument by, ex by rewinding the, its last two rounds. Okay? And uh, actually, at this point, no problem happened, and we can still show the indistinguishability at this point. However, a problem occurs when we try to simulate session two. Okay. So in particular, uh, when we rewind the zero knowledge argument in session one, uh, the WI proof in session two is also rewind because uh, they are executed in a concurrent way. Okay. And because of this rewinding, we can no longer use the WI property of this which is indistinct proof. Okay. And this is problematic because uh, if we try to simulate the session two, we need to change witness in this WI proof. So if we can't use the uh, witness indistinguishability here, we cannot show the indistinguishability. Okay? So you might think that uh, for this specific example, you can solve this problem in some way, but in general, this problem is not so easy to solve. And essentially what we want is a uh, witness indistinguishable proof of knowledge that satisfies some uh, witness indistinguishability and even when it is rewound. And uh, you might think that uh, we can use uh, resettable witness indistinguishable proof here because uh, it uh, guarantees exactly this kind of witness indistinguishability. However, uh, since we also require proof of knowledge property, we cannot use uh, resettable WI here in, uh, in a direct way. Okay? Then uh, we solve this problem uh, by observing that uh, we need to change witness in the WI proof only on the main thread. Okay? So recall that the, what we want is a witness indistinguishability that holds even when it is rewound. Okay. So this means that even if there's a many thread of execution, like this, and uh, WI proof is given in each thread, we need some kind of uh, witness indistinguishability. And our observation that is that uh, if we change witness in all the thread, on all the thread, then we need a resetable WI. But if so, but for, for in our setting, actually we need to change the witness only here, only on the main thread. And on the other thread, we, need to, we don't need to change the witness. Okay? And this is, this is because uh, we now consider super polynomial time simulation. So, uh, so, idea world, uh, so the idea world simulator doesn't use any rewinding. So idea world doesn't have any, uh, the idea world has only the main thread. So, so in other words, uh, only the hybrid use, uh, use uh, rewinding. So in the hybrid, the full, full simulation is needed only on the main thread, and we don't need to do full simulation on the other thread because they anyway disappear in the ideal world. Okay? So what we actually want is a witness indistinguishable proof of knowledge that satisfies witness indistinguishability in this setting, and uh, we, 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 co we construct such a witness indistinguishable proof of knowledge by combining that, which satisfy witness resettable WI, and the extractable uh, commitment, which satisfy commi uh, extractability. Okay. So I want, I want say 
the detail of this one. So for if you are interesting, please read the paper. Okay. And uh, there are many, many other technicalities in the proof. And each of them is not so significant, but uh, but uh, in order uh, but uh, taking care of each of them is not so easy. So so you need to get pay, pay special attention to this these uh, technicalities. Okay. So this is a summary. So the, our result is a five round uh, concurrent secure two party computation protocol. And uh, what is important is uh, is that even in the concurrent setting, we use the same round of complexity as the standard one protocol. So this concludes my talk, so thank you very much. We have time for one or two questions. So what if you relax the three round to the four round so you have a, so you can. So yeah, but actually we need uh, some kind of uh, public coin property also on, on normal commitment, and uh, as far as I know, I know there is no public coin for on the normal commitment. If you, but if you, oh okay. Uh, if you, if we have, then we can relax the round of complexity to four. Okay. 